All right. Hey, so finally some good news. 20, you know, 2020. Um, actually, this is bigger news for a while, but the poster child of extinction or endangered species anyway, the panda bear is actually no longer endangered. Um, they were taken off the endangered species list like now four years ago. They are still vulnerable, which means it's not perfect, but um, there's been enough effort spearheaded by people, our species, to make sure this these guys don't disappear forever. Can you imagine if, you know, when they were endangered, there was a time when we were pretty sure the only time your grandchildren would ever see a panda would be in a zoo. And then their grandchildren would just read about them in books. But now, um, thanks to efforts of a lot of people, and it's mostly protecting habitat, all right? But we're talk gonna talk about extinction. In today's class, we're gonna focus on probably the most famous extinct animals. Yabba dabba do. Mr. Kovacs class. It's Mr. Kovacs class. It's Mr. Kovacs class. He's interesting too. It's Mr. Kovacs class. And he's super cool. It's Mr. Kovacs class. Yabba dabba doo. Hey, hey, dinosaurs. The most famous of the extinct animals. You know, um, Let's see, if you go back about 2,000 years, there's evidence that um, somebody found dinosaur fossils and referred to them as dragon bones uh, in what is now modern day China. But, um, and there's some evidence that even in Europe, they discovered things that they thought were bones that belonged to giant people, which we now know were probably dinosaur bones. But I guess the first official dinosaurs were discovered in uh, like 1816. Okay, so if you think about it, George Washington would never have known what a dinosaur, okay? So if you think about it, George Washington would never have known what a dinosaur, okay? So if you think about it, George Washington would never have known what a dinosaur was, right? Because <laughs> they weren't even, I mean, they weren't even named dinosaurs until later. So the first dinosaur fossil was, a, uh, it was from a, a, um, animal which was called at the time megalosaurus anyway you gotta imagine the first guy to find dinosaur fossils was like what the heck is this it's like evidence of some monster that roamed the earth not all dinosaurs were monstrous but the monstrous ones are probably the most uh famous and um uh, it must have been mind-blowing because people were like i mean think about it like you all just discovered that this land there was like monsters roaming the earth that you never could have imagined and yet here's the evidence I, it must have been wild. Anyway, if you're like typical kids now, you've grown up with dinosaurs and, you know, you probably read books about them and played with your little dinosaur toys. And maybe you've seen the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World movies. And, um, yeah, they are fascinating, I think, because they are extinct. Um, but, well, we'll get to that later. But I don't think they actually are extinct. But uh, let's just remind ourselves, right, to be a fossil, first of all, if you find a fossil of a dinosaur bone, you're not actually finding their bones. You're finding what's called a replacement fossil or mold or a cast of their bones into rock. Okay, so their actual bones are long gone. They've been replaced with minerals. Uh, the other thing you need to know is that if you find a, like a skeleton fossil, that animal died a horrific death. Horrific. And so they're usually all contorted like this. They had to be basically buried alive so rapidly that their body was covered without um, enough oxygen to allow mo some of their parts to rot away. So even their bones, which eventually would rot away, remain intact for so long that they can turn into rock. Um, if you're buried today, you probably won't become a fossil. Okay? Um, just too much bacteria and stuff. You really have to be in a really bacteria-free environment. No rotting, no fungus. And then you have to be there for a long time, undisturbed. Anyway, we know about dinosaurs as they've left lots of imprints and things. And uh, in the 1800s is when it all kind of started. And now every time we find dinosaur skeletons or remains or whatever, we try to piece together the story of dinosaurs. And it's 
it's pretty much taken right now, we talked about this before, that um, modern day birds are the direct descendant of the dinosaurs. That is, basically, dinosaurs still exist. We just now call them birds. Um, you'll see today in part two and part three, you're gonna be studying some dinosaurs and you see some of those similarities. But what I wanna talk about today is, uh, and also like, how do we know when they live? We know that dinosaurs went extinct about 65 million years ago. And we know that by the fossil record. And the fossil record is really, really, it's tricky. It's like a big puzzle, right? And people try to put it together. The first piece of the puzzle is, we call the law of superposition, where fossils are found in sedimentary rock and sedimentary rock gets laid down one layer on top of another. And as mud and dirt gets put on top, it presses down the layers and they solidify into rock. So the deeper you go, the older things are. Okay? But it doesn't tell you how old they are. How old they are depends on knowing the makeup of the rock, the chemicals in rock. And not every rock tells you its story. Only rocks that have what we call radioactive elements, and there are lots of different ones, and what we know is that certain radioactive elements like uranium, they fall apart at a certain rate. When they're done falling apart, you have lead. So if you can take a rock sample and you can measure how much uranium there is to lead, it gives you an idea of how much uranium has fallen apart. And if you know that uranium takes a billion years to turn into lead, you'll know how long that rock has been there. Right? We do that with a bunch of other chemicals too. Uh, for more recent things, you have, they all have what we call different half-lives. So uranium is like the big old, old things. And some of these guys are less old. Um, carbon's probably for the most recent things. We can, we know that carbon turns from radioactive carbon 14 to carbon, stable carbon 12 in a few thousand years. So we can date rocks if they have carbon in them. We can date them and get them within a few thousand years. But nobody's gonna get you the exact date. It's gonna be just close. And then you take both of those, right? You take the relative dating where you know that the, and if you can identify a few rocks in between, you know the relative age. You know, like, if this rock is um, 140 million years old, the rock underneath it has to be older. The rock above it has to be younger. If you know this rock is 120 million years old, now you know that these rocks are between 140, 120 million years. Right? That, that's all it tells you. So if you find a fossil in this rock, you can estimate how old it is. And then we put together the story of life with the fossil record. Right? And we, we name big changes in rocks. We usually name by, we give them names. We call them periods or eras. And they, um, they're, usually, they're usually named by big changes in the animals we find in rocks or the plants even we find in rocks. Um, and every once in a while, we, you come up with a weird anomaly where you find all these fossils and then you hit a point where the newer rocks don't have them anymore. And that's the evidence of mass extinction. And I thought this was pretty interesting. Here's kind of a history of kind of common things that you know with. The oldest animals in a fossil, fossil record are animals with shells. Of course, shells were preserved pretty easy. The youngest ones are obviously the birds and um, people like us. <laughs> people is on there. We like that. But I think it's more interesting here in the plants. Flowering plants have only existed for about, you know, 60 some odd million years. So if you think of it, the dinosaurs went extinct here very few dinosaurs ate an apple. They didn't exist, there were no flowery plants. They had to be eating whatever plants were there, ginkgos and pine trees and ferns, right? That's, because that's all that was there. I think that's, that's fascinating. Like, birds have been around just a little bit longer than the flowering plants, you know? I just think that's cool. Anyway, we'll have a great day today. And uh, unfortunately, we too will go extinct. Just hopefully not anytime soon.